the volume of exports has remained the same. Why can't Nigeria conduct oil block licensing when we chew transparently so that the world can trust us? <laughs> But CBM for no federal government should stop. Very sadly, too, because I, as a Nigerian, haven't seen the consequences, the adverse consequences of a shock or the external shock on the economy. To the extent that, yes, you talked about the fact that oil. Revenue, Nigeria is solely dependent on revenue from oil. And suddenly, you saw crude prices dropping from as high at a point at about $130 a barrel to as low as $28 a barrel. To a point where, and I, I say sometime in 2013, 2014, Nigeria earned revenues that came into Central Bank from various sources, other crude oil or royalties and the rest of them, a month was about $3.4 billion. Suddenly, sometime, when crude prices came down to as low as $28 a barrel, what came into the post was only, in fact, less than $500, $500 million. And then you are in a room where you have, in the National Economic Council precisely, where you have the 36 state governors the vice president chairing the meeting and state governors are saying they can't pay salaries because there isn't money to pay salaries. The revenues that have come to be shared are not enough to pay salaries. And then you have a president that says, look, he cannot imagine a situation where people work, work and can't be paid and that Something needs to be done that they have to be paid. And Dr. Obikili says that I should turn my eyes <laughs> and tell federal government jump in the lake. That's unfair <laughs> to say. What do you do to boost exports? We understand it. We know everything. You know, we must have read about import-oriented industrialization, export-oriented industrialization. But you have what? Do you go into export-oriented industrialization when you, have, you can't even feed yourself? Please. Let's read about that. Civilians should learn to say no to federal governments. And I said so, if you are confronted with the challenges, you will say no. I love flexibility in the FX market. Well, I want, maybe sometime you and I, when you come, you come and tell me where you saw my hand, but I, I, I have tried as much as possible to remove my hand from the FX market. But if you are quarreling that, that the exchange rate has remained at 360, you would not find my hand. But the point is that if we did not do what we did, and I will explain it this way. There was a time when, yeah, precisely about February 2017, the market had reached 525. And I was being told, don't worry, next week. Oh, I don't know, was that Bismarck? Some Bismarck or somebody told me that, look, don't worry, next week, it will be 600. The next week, it will be 800. The next week, in fact, this lady from, is it Financial Times? She spoke to me. I forgot that lady's name. She said, oh, I hear that it will be 1,000. And then, luckily, God helped us. We came up with the idea of the import and exporters window. When we opened that window, the market was 525. And we started a program of, at least to create the confidence, we prog a program of selling reserves for people to know that the market is allowed to run on its own. And with all the various interventions and windows that we have set up, we saw the market, at least, at least in my own lifetime again. What, what, what I had seen in the FX market is that when it starts going up, if you are lucky, you stem it. You, are, you cannot, I have never seen where you are lucky. After fighting it, it begins to drop. Even because if you have the study, you can let us see your study. When you, when you saw it dropping. And we started a program of this intervention, and of course it started to drop. And it dropped to a point where the flows were heavy, the flows were very, very heavy coming in. And we felt that if we allowed that to continue, of course it could have come down to maybe less than 300, perhaps 
those who were influencing the money would have felt that, well, at some point they'll fight back because the, the, as far as they're concerned, it was becoming too low and that they couldn't come in again. And so they go elsewhere, they go to other markets where the fundamentals favor where they think it's at, at the kind of parity that they expect. And you go to 360, which at that time we thought was close to the real effective exchange rate, and we said, no, at this point, we must begin to buy into the reserves. And that is simply what we understand about if managed float. We would, and you were very right when you said that we should allow a gradual depreciation or a gradual, let, not, let there not be a very serious uh, shocks or jumps or ups and downs that could create shocks and make it difficult for business to plan. I agree with you. But what I'm saying is, um, we have been as flexible as possible, and um, we think we're doing the best in the circumstance, and we deserve your accolades and not the kind of criticisms we get from you. CBM was focused on its core mandate of price stability. It's easy again to say, but when you come into an environment where things, yes, you want to focus on price stability, but what I have known, I am also a student of development banking, and I know that if you look at emerging economies, go and study, go and read them. Is it Malaysia? Is it Indonesia? Is it Brazil? There's no how you will not see the hand of the Central Bank of Nigeria intervening in one form 